Greetings, performance reviews where I give you the review from the technician's point of view. And today I have a Karcher Windsor machine. And not just any Karcher Windsor machine, I have the big boy. This sucker is 18 inches wide. Interesting machine because it's like Cebo X7, but has the G series rounded top body, but has the X automatic adjustment and filtration. So that's very good. And as you can see, it looks like a hammerhead shark. It is just so wide. Just for scale, we're gonna show it next to my Windsor Sensation right here, which is like a SIBO X1 or previous Karcher product like the XP15. Now that we've established what we're looking at, we're gonna go over in this overview today of what this is, what features this has. We're gonna do a sound test. We're gonna do a carpet pickup test. We're gonna go in the shop, take it apart and show you the insides. And I'm gonna explain who this is for. I think we'll start off who this is for. This is for somebody who needs to vacuum a wide area of carpet, not hard floor, specifically you would use this for carpet, and needs to do it quickly, but the area is not big enough where you would use an auto scrubber or some of the bigger push behind machines, but a 12 or 14 inch machine would take too long. Now, this machine has the same motor as the 12 inch and the 14 inch machine, which means you do lose a little bit of suction, but these machines have plenty of power to start with, so I don't think it's a huge deal, but it's just something to note. However, you're getting significantly more power than you would in something like a wide path sanitary or direct air machine with all the benefits of this being a bypass motor. Now, the first thing I wanna note is this was on loan to us from a friend of the channel. I am not associated with Karcher in any sort of way. And this was a factory refurb, which means they put a paper bag in it. Now I'm just gonna say right away, throw the paper bag away. Do not use paper bags in this machine. Do not choke this machine. Do not submit yourself to lack of filtration. Use genuine Karcher or SIBO bags. This is going to increase filtration and airflow and the longevity of your machine. Now inside here, we have the typical pre-motor filter and this will not shut. If you do not have a bag in place or the pre-motor filter, you can see there's a nice little metal tab there on the bottom. You can put a pre-motor HEPA filter if your heart desires. And again, if the bag is not in here, you're not going to get that to shut. Or if you use some of the generic bags, it will not shut as well. So that's gonna go in there just like that. Very, very nice. The machine is simple to operate. You just have a lever in the back and the machine tilts down. Now, one of the newer features of this machine is if you're really rough with this, They designed that lever to slip. So that's a big improvement over previous generations there. Then in back, we have an upholstery and a crevice tool. The upholstery tool is a lint picker. There is no dusting brush with this version of the machine. However, this is a SIBO 36 millimeter. There's a quirk of any of these machines. I just wanna explain that because a lot of maids don't understand this. So the way the hose works, you can just pull the hose out. There's nothing locking it in this position. What locks the hose is removing the wand. This little tab interacts with this lock right here, which means when you put this back, you must insert it straight down. If you do this, not only is it not gonna have enough suction, your hose is no longer locked in place properly. So definitely just make sure you do that when you're using this. And this is designed for you to pull why the machine's running and do baseboards, quick things. It's got a nice ergonomic handle. The wand is very, very short. So if you're gonna prolong use with the wand, the idea is that you attach the crevice tool and now the wand is even comfortable for me to use at six foot three tall. There is a various adapter stack on the wand. It starts with 35 millimeter, but can also accept some inch and a half accessories there as well. Turning the machine on sucks the hose back into the machine. The carrying handle is located here. There's also a carrying handle in the front. One other cool thing about this is the hose disconnects. So if you need to clear a blockage, you can definitely do that. I guess one other thing I should cover is there is a nice big 
knob that you can turn here, removing the handle, which means if you think you have cord or switch problems, you can change that without wiring it up. So another feature of this machine is how easy it is just to break apart and assemble. So I'm going to show that. There's a big button here, and that takes the bag compartment off. Like I showed earlier, there's just a knob here off, and that pulls the handle. So just like that, we can disassemble the machine. To reassemble, you simply just slide this like so, and then uh, engage the handle, the little knob here, and test. These are definitely the easiest machines to maintain on the market. All right, speaking of clearing blockages, there is a yellow tab where you can get in and clear any blockages you need without any tools. You press, there's a button right there. You can press that and release both brush rollers. The edge cleaning, because of the center drive of this machine, is quite good. In fact, it's really some of the best. The brush rollers are easy to change, they're easy to clean, they're top rack dishwasher safe. Uh, and the machine will adjust as it wears down, which is something that's kind of unique to having the automatic adjustment, is even once the brush roller starts to wear, it's going to adjust the machine based on that sensor. You have a drive right here and you can get in here, clean what you need. There is a squeegee on the bottom of this, which is one of the additions to the newer generation machine versus previous machines. And you can see the end caps are very, very easy. You insert the brush, half turn. I mean, this is just easy and meant for the end user to maintain. The machine itself uh, is still made in Germany. Everything's uh, very, very simple. I have a video, if you wanna know how to date these, go check out my interview with Lenny, the head tech at SIBO. He talks about dating these uh, in detail. The machine has soft rubber wheels on the bottom of it, so even if you are rolling this around on hard floor, that way the wheels won't scratch it. Uh, again, I really don't recommend a spinning brush on hard floor, uh, but the performance of this, if you have to do something quick, might surprise you. One of the biggest upgrades to this generation of machine is the filtration. On previous generation machines it would rely on this top cover to hold the filter in place. And what would happen is sometimes maids would hit the top cover and then the filter wouldn't work right because they've cracked the top cover. Even if that happens on this machine, the filter actually direct goes directly onto the motor here, which is independent of the top cover. And this filter cover in the back means you're not going to damage it. It looks like a little mini vacuum bag. And this is really an upgrade in terms of filtration. It's really easy to change. It just snaps on like that. And then this cover really does feel nice. All right, in the shop with the XP18, I'm gonna talk about how you get into this machine, some details. First thing I'm gonna do is just remove the filter and set the filter cover aside. The way this is, is it's very easy to get into. There are Phillips screws. Unfortunately, they have not standardized on Torx yet. Screws have Loctite on them, which is nice. So I'm going to just take the cover off. So one criticism I've had in the past of this cover is these grommets can come off, but they are a little bit better mounted these days. So what we have here are a lifetime belt system. I've seen these belts last 20 plus years and been fine, even in the commercial setting. The bearings inside this brush block and this clutch will wear out before those belts do. Everything's very easy to get to if you need to get to it. There's just Phillips screws. Things like the motor and things where you shouldn't get to, those have torque screws. Again, I wish that was all the way around. The seal from the exhaust filter is directly from the motor. It seals up very, very nicely. It does a good job. Um, again, what I like is it's relying on the seal here and not on the cover, unlike previous models. The circuit board is extremely simple right here. Um, right here, uh, this lead right here is for an LED headlight. If they choose to do an LED headlight, or if you can see here, 
the space for the LED headlight is already right here. Uh, my friend Hoover Lux over in the UK has a great video converting a SIBO uh, and showing how to upgrade that, but you just change the bumper and plug that in and you're good to go. Uh, everything is robust, built to last. The plastic that's used, let's find out if it's glass reinforced. No, they are not using glass reinforced plastic. It is just regular ABS UL plastic as shown right here. Again, everything is made in Germany. The circuit board on this machine, unlike previous generations, has been stabilized with epoxy. That makes this extremely tough and resistant to all sorts of stuff. That assures this will happen for years to come in terms of quality. All right, here's the motor. One of the more important features is this grounding strap. That needs to be intact for things to work with the circuit board. Don't ask me how I know that. Um, it's a Domol motor, 60 hertz, 120 volts, of course. Uh, when you pull the motor out of its casing, which has a beautiful rubber motor mount, you do have to just untwist this, it comes right off. Very simple. Another thing I was able to find out that is not an advertised feature is that it has a suction relief valve. And I thought that when I tested the working vacuum. So yeah, it does have a suction relief valve right there. It's a twin fan Domal motor. Again, nice big rubber gasket. If you see there, there's a SIBO logo right there. So everything is nice and easy to get to. I have no complaints about servicing these machines. I think these are some of the easiest to service machines on the market. Let's see how much working vacuum this Windsor gets. Well, it gets about 30 inches sealed and about 60 to 65 inches working. So that's not bad. Not great, but it's not bad and should be more than enough to clear the debris from the nozzle. Now, one of the benefits to this design is it has a set of lights that lets you know what's going on with the vacuum. So even if somebody's never used the vacuum, they could guess what's wrong or what needs to be done. There is a blockage slash bag indicator right there, which has a nice red light. So you know exactly what's going on. You have a carpet height adjustment indicator because it's automatically adjusts to the type of carpet height. It has an up and a down, which will actuate with a green light. If you get something jammed in the brush roller, there's no belt to change. Instead, this red light comes on and you simply remove the object and reset the vacuum cleaner. All right, we're gonna do the performance reviews pickup test and also we have the studio microphone hooked up so you're gonna hear the real sound of the machine. I just wanna give a shout out to Ryan who lent this to the channel for a review. So big thank you, Ryan. Everybody go down in the comments and thank Ryan for lending this vacuum out. So let's see how it does. We're gonna let the machine self adjust and if you're unfamiliar with our pickup test, it's breakfast cereal, flour, cat litter, and fresh pet hair. And of course, I had to do a lot more than I usually do for the width of this machine. Thank you for your patience. I had to wait for this to adjust first. And when you're done with this machine, you have to wait a few seconds when you turn it off because it's gonna lift the head off the carpet. So right away, breakfast cereal, flour, a little bit of cat litter on this side, right where you see this hair which if we look at the bottom side of this machine, matches up where the drive is. So there's no brush agitation, so it didn't lift the hair from there. Uh, but it edge cleaned really, really well. And that's something that these do. So if you do have hair where the drive is, it might not get it. And same with the cat litter. And this, this is good results, especially considering we have the same size motor on a larger head. And I want to mention this has a bronze rating from the Carpet and Rug Institute. 
So I knew it was going to do all right before we started this test. You know, that is what it is. So uh, we're not going to do a test on hard floor. This machine is not really designed to do that. I don't recommend it. So we're not going to do a test on hard floor. So carpet pickup is adequate. But if you're dealing with a lot of pet hair, just understand you might have to go over the section where the drive is. All right. Well, my final thoughts on the Windsor XP Sensor 18, and this is going to go for the 14 and probably the 12 as well, is if you have a large area of carpet that you wish to clean quickly, efficiently, with a low maintenance machine that can be maintained without a dedicated maintenance person, this is the machine for you. These are probably the toughest upright vacuums on the US market today, and their reputation just shows that. I haven't been to a hotel or commercial facility lately and not seen one of these in the background somewhere. And that's been true for a very long time. So as these machines have replaced the sanitaires of the world and a lot of the Oryx even, it makes sense. They're low maintenance and built to last. The ease of this particular version with the idiot lights I think is really a good idea when you have a whole bunch of people use it who aren't invested in the product. These machines typically have about 2,000 hours of motor life and they can be rebuilt as many times as you want. And all these pieces can be ordered and changed and installed. Uh, Windsor Karcher makes these parts directly available and you will have to go through Windsor Karcher to get parts for the XP18 as there is not a SIBO version of this. The bumper along the edge here is a really nice addition to the machine along with the upgraded filtration system and the upgraded pedal. I really like all these things and I'm glad that they've added all these features to the machine. I also think that the body just looks very sleek compared to the G, G1, G2. I think the G4 and G5 series body just looks a lot sleeker, even though it's basically the same guts inside. So if you're looking to buy one of these, I'm gonna put a link down below that supports the channel to Amazon. I would greatly appreciate if you click on that link if you want to buy one of these. Uh, and I'll also have links to the other widths as well. If you're looking to buy a 12 or a 14 inch version, I'm gonna recommend that you just go to your local SIBO dealer and pick one of those up. That way you get a little bit longer warranty and you can get all the instructions and stuff from them as well. Have yourself a fantastic day.